Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Nikon bellows on a DSLR or a mirrorless Nikon camera. This video applies specifically to Nikon's PB4 bellows, but any Nikon bellows should work. A bellows will enable you to make ultra close-up images way beyond life size. One of my favorite things about a bellows, it's that it's easy to adapt many different lenses. For example, I have adapters to use M42 mount lenses, to use Leica thread enlarging lenses, and I even adapted an old Bell & Hale slide projector lens using a, a broken Nikon F-mount lens, so I took the lens mount off and epoxied the um, lens to it. Now Nikon made several different bellows units over the years. There was a Model 2, which was their first one for the Nikon F, then a Model 3. Why no Model 1? Well, there was a Model 1. The Model 1 was for the Nikon rangefinder cameras. And the one we're going to be looking at today is the Nikon PB4 bellows attachment. It was introduced around 1970. It has two unique features. It has a ability to swing and shift the lens. And I'll show you that in a little bit. There was also a PB5, which was, had the same amount of extension as the PB4, and then, uh, but, uh, no shift, no swing, and it didn't have a focusing rail built in. Finally, they came out, I guess it was probably close to 1980 with the uh, PB6 bellows. Okay, so we're looking at the PB4 today, and right now I have it set up on my Nikon Z7 and mounted to the front is a AF Micro Nikkor 60mm 2.8. Now when using the bellows, this bellows has no connection for automatic diaphragm. Obviously, because of its age, it doesn't have any CPU or it doesn't transfer any information from the lens to the camera. So it's strictly manual. Manual focus, you must have an aperture ring. Now this lens does have a CPU, but it really doesn't matter for use with this bellows. Although some people have said you should not mount a CPU lens directly to the bellows because it could damage the CPU and the lens. And to use something like this, a small extension ring, a PK11A, which was a much later design. However, I have found no problem mounting the lens with at least this particular lens with the CPU to the bellows. So the front of the bellows has a Nikon F bayonet mount. Standard Nikon F bayonet mount. Okay. The rear of the bellows will mount directly to a Nikon F mount camera. In this case, of course, I have the F to Z adapter attached so that I could mount the bellows to the camera. This particular bellows has a focusing rail. You'll see a double rail. This is the rail where the bellows moves back and forth. This bottom rail will actually move the entire assembly back and forth. And if you have ever done macro photography, life size and greater, you know it's much easier to focus by moving the entire assembly back and forth. Now, if the bellows did not have this bottom rail, you would need to somehow move the camera back and forth, either getting an accessory rail, all right, which are sold, or moving the whole tripod assembly back and forth, or moving the subject back and forth to get good focus. This bellows has a lot of extension. Okay, right now it is set for its minimum extension. All right, let me just get this baby. All right, and you can see 
how much it will extend. With a 50mm 2.0 lens attached to this bellows, you would be able to get magnification from 0.83 times to 3.6 times. However, if you mount the lens in reverse, you would be able to get a range of 1.6 times magnification to 4.4 times. With a 24mm 2.8 lens mounted to this bellows in reverse, you would be able to get magnifications up to 10 times. Now why in reverse? At high magnifications usually the quality is better when a lens is mounted in reverse and also it gives you greater working distance from the front of the lens to the subject. So how do you mount a lens in reverse? Well Nikon made accessories for that. This is a BR2 ring. The BR2 ring has 52 millimeter threads on one side and a Nikon F bayonet mount on the other. So with a lens with 52 millimeter threads such as this 55 millimeter macro, just screw it in. Let's remove this 60 millimeter lens. Okay, so now we're going to take this lens, this 55 millimeter macro with the BR2 attached. So now we have it mounted in reverse. And you say, well, that, that rear element is kind of sticking out. And I'm afraid, you know, what do I do? I, I normally use a lens shade. Well, Nikon makes something called the BR3. And the BR3 will mount to the Nikon F mount side of the lens. All right. Let's take that off and show you. Okay, so this would mount to the rear of the lens, which is now the front of the lens, right? And it gives you 52 millimeter threads if you would like to add a filter. Okay, but in and of itself, it does provide some protection to that rear element. So now we have a combination that's going to get us really close. So what else? Well, and I mentioned that one of the things I like about these of any bellows is the ability to attach various lenses, enlarging lenses, Pentax mount lenses, any adapter that you can get to the bellows. So here is a adapter for Pentax M42 mount to Nikon F mount. And this is an old Helios lens. I can just screw, th screw this in and attach this. I'm not going to do that to save time. Uh, I also have adapters to use M39 Leica thread enlarging lenses. And enlarging lenses are great for macro photography, especially if you are photographing flat subjects, uh, posted stamps, you want to photograph money or a coin or anything that's flat because they are very flat field. They were designed for enlarging and designed for enlarging negatives onto flat photographic paper. So here we have an adapter for Leica thread enlarging lenses. And there are a ton of Leica thread enlarging lenses out there. This particular one actually isn't a Leica thread. It has an adapter for Leica thread. It, it's a 4.5, had this lens for years. It's of 85 millimeter, 4.5, I believe it's an enlarging lens. It has small aperture adjustment here, but, and then it has this adapter. I don't even remember where I got this. I then adapted to an old Nikon F bayonet mount, a Bell & Hal projector lens. So you have so many options. The thing is when using a bellows, you're losing a lot of light as that bellows extends. But of course, if you have through the lens metering, that's not a problem. Of course, any lens you mount should have an aperture. If you used, if you tried to use one of the newer G lenses, you would only be able to use it at its minimum aperture. Now this Bell & Howe lens has no aperture, but you know, it works fine. It was an old projector which we had thrown away and I decided to take the lens off. So let me just go over in a little more detail on this bellows. If you have ever worked with a view camera to do architectural photography or product photography, you are probably familiar with the shine flug principle. And what that is, it gives you the ability 
to keep objects in focus if they are not parallel to the film plane, or in this case, the digital sensor. Okay? If we were shooting this straight on, like this, with no adjustment, we might have the center portion in focus, or whatever we focused on in focus, but areas out this way would not, as they fall away. So, what we are able to do with this bellows, and I don't have a lens, well, you know what, let me put a lens on here. All right, so let's mount this 55 macro. Got to be careful sometimes when reverse when mounting a reverse mounted lens because it will start to unscrew. Okay, so here I have it. Doesn't really matter what aperture, just for illustration purposes. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to swing this lens. Okay, we could swing it this way or we could swing it that way. We want to swing it to bring. So we're going to swing it this way. While looking through the viewfinder, you will swing it until you see the entire image in focus, remembering that before you do that swing, to focus on the center of the image. There's way more to this Schlein Flug principle. You can read about it online. And you can look through the viewfinder, adjust it until it's right. Sometimes when you do that, you also have to shift the lens either to the left or to the right to keep the image centered. So we have those two movements. We have the shift and we have the swing. And you could read about the shine flug principle and how it works. Same thing, a principle applies to tilt and shift lenses. Uh, Nikon, Canon make tilt and shift lenses. Same principle. This is a very well made bellows. Let's take it off and let you give you a closer view. Now, see what just happened there? I'm going to try to grab the adapter, the BR2, as I take the lens off because it will easily unthread. All right. So let's just take a closer look at this bellows. As I mentioned, you can move the whole assembly back and forth, all right, on this focusing rail. That focusing rail mounts directly to the tripod. And I have an Arca Swiss plate mounted to the bottom of the bellows. You can turn the camera by depressing this button to a vertical position. Okay, and it does click into place, either vertical or horizontal. It has on the front here an attachment for a slide copy attachment. All right, and that's what this is for. This tightens that. Everything tightens down once you move it back and forth, get it focused where you want it. You should lock everything down. When you are in high magnification, any little movement will throw your focus off, will cause a blur. So it's very important, even when using a mirrorless camera, that you should use a, some type of remote release or set the self timer for a five second delay. Stay very still. Now I am in a basement right now, so it's a concrete floor, but this table is a little wobbly. So I don't want to touch my subject at all. Now this bellows will also work with a DSLR. The one thing you really have to be careful with is if you have a grip attached to the camera. It may be difficult to attach, uh, to attach the bellows. You may need to use a small extension tube. Okay, it seems to work fine here with the Z camera. I should have turned it off before I took the lens off, before I took the bellows off. So now let me get a DSLR. All right, first thing I'm going to do is remove the F to Z adapter. I don't need that, obviously. Okay, so now I'm going to mount the PB4 bellows to this Nikon D810. Let's remove the lens cap. Now, cameras that have a grip like this that extends, you may have difficulty mounting the bellows. Now, I know from previous experience, in order to mount that bellows, I need to add some extension. So I have two Nikon extension tubes here, a PK11A and a PK12, giving me a total of 22 millimeters of extension. So I'm going to attach 
these to the camera and that pulls the mounting point past this grip. And if you could see that, it goes a little bit past. So now that I have that additional extension, I should easily be able to mount the bellows. Okay, so easy that was. Let's take it off, depress the button on the extension tube, and then just remount. Okay, so depending on the camera model, now with the older cameras without a grip, film cameras, no problem mounting the bellows. You don't need that additional extension. Okay, now, now that we have this mounted on the, uh, have the camera mounted on the bellows, let me just give you a few more details on this bellows. Um, this is the mounting point for the tripod, and I put an Arca Swiss plate on there. There's, everything locks down. You can see these beautifully polished rails. This is very well made. And this double rail construction gives you a very smooth movement. This extra set of rails on the bottom here allows you to move the entire sem of assembly back and forth for focusing. I think this is a real useful accessory, giving you a lot of options with lenses and the ability to focus really close. And when you do that, when you get in real close into that macro range and beyond, everything looks different. You see things you never saw before with the naked eye. I think the swinging front and shifting works really well if you're trying to extend depth of field in macro photography. By the way, that works best with longer lenses. Shorter lenses don't have as big an image circle. For example, an enlarging lens, a 135 millimeter enlarging lens, like the one you see here, was designed to cover four by five film. So that should give you a good deal of ability to swing the lens without losing part of the image. Now, Nikon made lenses specifically for the bellows, short mount lenses. Uh, originally, there was a 135, and then later on, they came out with a 105. Those are short mount lenses. They don't have a focusing mount. They can only be used on the bellows. One of the real nice things with those lenses, besides their being very sharp, they also could focus on the bellows to infinity where none of these lenses, once you add all this extension, you are in a very tight focus range. So if you're interested in a bellows, just check online, use camera store, you'll be able to find them. I think the PB4 is the nicest because it's the only one that has that swing and shift feature, and it's extremely well made, as are all the Nikon bellows. Nikon isn't the only company to make bellows. There were third-party companies, of course, Canon, Minolta, Pentax, they all made them. And if you get the proper adapter, this PB4 or any of the Nikon bellows could be adapted to any other camera. So that's one of the nice things today with mirrorless cameras. It's just about anything from any other manufacturer can be adapted to your particular brand mirrorless camera. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So thanks for watching.